This episode of 1900 Wrestling is brought to you as always by everybody who supports patreon.com slash 1900 wrestling. You can head on over there right now. Hey, look, it's just this simple. You go there, you 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 kick in whatever you want to kick in. Uh, you fund our wrestling fund, which Dills and I use exclusively to go to wrestling events and bring you guys there with our unique audio documentaries. And you also get exclusive content, including access to our Discord, and you get the answers to our Melodica Challenge, like this one from, from last week. Oh, there you go. You would know what it was uh, the day that we did the show. If you are a patron, go ahead and check it out, patreon.com slash 1900 wrestling. But enough of talking about how we support the show. What do you say we do with the damn thing? I want you to call me for all of wrestling's latest news and views. I've been involved in wrestling for 35 years, and nobody, but nobody knows wrestling like me. Remember the number one. 900 Wrestling. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, that means that we have begun yet another edition of 1900 Wrestling. My name is Justin Robert Young. Joining me, as always, is my tag team partner from Austin, Texas. His name is Willie Dills Gregory. How you doing? I'm doing great, Justin. It, uh, it's good to be here on a Monday. It's pouring rain outside. Uh, I was supposed to go golfing later. Apparently, that's not happening. But nope. you know what is going to happen then instead? What? I'm going to rewatch Wrestle Circus. Oh. I'm going to watch are, it again. We are going to talk about the big Wrestle Circus show. This was uh, the debut of Cody Rhodes at Wrestle Circus. The ROH world title was uh, defended or was not defended? It was on the line. It yes. was on the uh, line. It didn't have to be, but it turned out that, yes, it was on the line. It was indeed on the line. Uh, we have the, that. the champion, by the way, the the uh, Wrestle Circus champion, not in the house. Shane Strickland, not there, unfortunately. Uh, but Leva Bates did a pretty nice Shane Strickland impersonation instead. So Oh, nice. You know, no, nobody, nobody left for... Uh, feeling wanting i think and it was there was some weirdness we'll yeah we'll talk about the whole thing we'll do that we'll do a whole little wrestle circus breakdown but let's begin with the week that was in w we uh (laughs) two really 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 good shows i felt like including some matches that uh are are ones that you would you would probably point back to at the end of the year and say these were among the, the matches of, of of the year for Raw and SmackDown. Which one do you uh, uh do you want to start with? I, whatever, man. I mean, I'm 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 ready. Well, I would say probably the big the big one is the dream match: John Cena versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Okay. We, yes. we made good place to start. We made uh, uh some commentary on this show last week that there was no way that this could end with a clean finish, and yet. We stand here in a world in which Shinsuke Nakamura went over clean on John Cena in a hell of a match. Uh, I believe he kicked out of two AAs, too. Kicked out of two AAs. Uh, uh, I love it, on, this. On, 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 like, regular TV. Like, not WrestleMania, not a pay-per-view. Just kicked out of two AAs. Sure. Uh, and the, the ending was, in my uh, a humble amateur opinion... Really, really great storytelling. Uh, it was John Cena hits Shinsuke with a with a third AA, and then looks to do the uh, the the cradle roll up the way that he yeah. beat uh, AJ Styles at Royal Rumble. So apparently, just the 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 indie killing cradle AA, right? Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, it is uh, to the well once too many times. Shinsuke sneaks out, uh, uh, hits him with a insane uh uh what is it a, a dragon the, suplex the right? well first it was the the suplex that oh yeah on his yeah neck. you're right yeah yeah uh and then the the kinshasa to end the match what was your feeling on on uh on on that match so i i last week said that i thought shinsuke was gonna win now I was kind of joking. <laughs> I didn't think he was actually going to win. Yeah. Uh, 
I thought for sure they were putting John Cena over. Like it just it just felt that way. But the thing that was kind of nagging at me was it's weird for Cena and Jinder at SummerSlam and and Cena breaks the record on Jinder, right? Like that was kind of yeah. like my my reasoning behind the whole thing. But it felt like maybe there was going to be something where Cena wins then somebody else enters the match or so I don't know, something like that. It was going to somehow get funky. So it wasn't just going to be Cena gender at SummerSlam. Yeah. Uh, that being said, like when I was watching the match, I was super rooting for Shinsuke and there I was, man, I was, I was sports entertained. Yes. Uh, that was, that was fantastic. And, and what um, I think we're, we're looking at is, Cena kind of entering his Undertaker phase where Undertaker yeah, is sure. ultimately the most important. Undertaker became the most important for two things. Number one, a person that your up and coming guy could beat. So he becomes bigger and better. And number two, the undefeated guy at, at WrestleMania. And I think that we are entering into that kind of phase for John Cena, where, where John Cena will probably not lose a lot at WrestleManias, but in these situations, he's going to make stars, and that's rad. I, who could complain about that role for John Cena and the company? He's, he's going really, to be really great at it, too, because not only will he like, you know, put people over in the matches, but he's going to get the best out of you as far as promos are concerned. Things like, like He really is just kind of the best... Outside of maybe like the Miz right now, like who does you know any any better promo work than John Cena? I mean Kevin Anybody? Owens, the uh, the Miz. I mean there's there's a few, there's a handful, but there's not many. I mean not many no. people on his level. No, I mean, yeah, not even close. Like he's he's just kind of he's kind of like the full package at this point, and still super in shape, perfect part timer. You know, it's yeah, like the whole thing was great, and Shinsuke finally looked good. Right. Like, yes, it's been kind of annoying seeing Shinsuke at the uh, on the on the main, the quote unquote main roster, uh, just being kind of kind of crapped on by the the Internet. Like the, just people don't like what he's doing. Yeah. And I get it because it hasn't been super exciting. Obviously, like when he came in his first match uh, in NXT against Sami Zayn was just like incredible. And we we're like, oh, here we go. Yeah. You know, Shinsuke over here in WWE. And uh, then since then, it's, you know, it's been a little bit lackluster, I guess you could say, if you watch like Wrestle Kingdoms and expect that every time. But I think now we're about to start to see like the kind of the coming out. So I expect him to win the title, to be honest. Like, I, I think SummerSlam is I, I the beginning so of a too. Shinsuke run. I also think there's going to be a misguided USA chant, and I, I, I I'm waiting for a very <laughs> awkward USA chant when he comes out. And, and I can't wait for Jinder to be like, "You people boo me because you don't like how I talk," and Shinsuke comes out and goes, "They cheer me, and I don't talk like them." You know, I wonder. It is not beyond the WWE to position Jinder as not a foreign heel, but a. I, uh, I I want to hide behind racism heel uh, uh, and have Shinsuke be uh, the, the the transcendent. No, I'm, I'm here for uh, the real promise of America, that they give everybody a chance, no matter sure. of race, creed, Q, color, Q religion. Ellis Island promo and, like, package and everything. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Real quick, uh, uh, some breaking news here. Bailey is out for SummerSlam thanks to yeah, I've heard her this. shoulder yep. injury. So that leaves the Raw women's title in doubt, although you would suspect that Sasha Banks Sasha or will get back in Nia there, right? Jax yeah. would slide up into that spot. Uh, let's let's get off of WWE for a minute. And 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 I want to ask you a question because the uh, you you had a busy weekend with the 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 the, the MGA, your your golf association having a big mm -hmm. event. I think you won if I saw if I read social media correctly. I did. Yeah. Yeah. I shot a a Brilliant 94. Uh, well, 91, but with three penalty strokes. But, yeah, uh, it was nice. It was good so times. I don't know if you were had your eyes glued to wrestling Twitter this weekend, but uh, you can please dial five to pay your respects because uh, the business is dead, uh, uh, courtesy of not one, but two 
shocking and disgusting acts. And and I want you, Willie, to judge for us now who killed the business more this weekend. Okay. So uh, 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 let's go ahead and take a look here. This is this is the first one. This is the shorter of the two. This is from the CZW pay-per-view, Once in a Lifetime. This was the final uh, match of Leo Rush in CZW. Of course, him rumored now to be heading to NXT. But against his longtime rival, Joey Janela, the bad boy, uh, this was a spot from that match in gift form. Here we go, Dills. Go ahead and uh, take a look. Joey Janela with a power bomb of Leo Rush through a table, off a ladder through a table. Leo Rush immediately standing up, no selling, uh, a massive, uh, a damaging move. Uh, that is the first uh, uh, murder of the business this weekend. Uh, Dills, your your opinion just on Leo Rush no selling a power bomb off a table or, or off a ladder no, into a off table. a ladder through a table yeah uh, <laughs> i mean look th- there's room for the no sell it's a uh, <laughs> it's a move like all all its own right what, 1 the, to 10 the no sell is a move 1 to 10 cuz this is a contest willie Sure. You will you will be judging against it. So just lock in right now yeah. on a scale from one to ten. How much did that kill the business? That would I'd say that killed the business about a three. I don't think that killed the business at all. I think the business is alive and well. Alive and well. I could see people being uh, a little annoyed by a no sell of a move of that caliber. The the fact is though, like we saw uh, the top rope pile driver not finish a match in Japan recently too. Like there, you know. Kayfabe is what it is. Uh, it's clearly more devastating to take a clothesline from about two feet away if you're pulling your arm towards you yeah. and you're calling it a rainmaker than it is to take a uh, pile driver off a top rope. Yeah. So uh... we know this. Look, it's just the it's it's all about you know force and actions and reactions. It's, just, it's and... physics, man. Yeah. Listen, there's yeah. a lot that uh, that the novice does not know. Uh, uh, and and we are trying to educate them. How about this one? All right, this is the other thing that killed the business this weekend. We swing you now to Belfast, Ireland, where at uh, the -the over-the-top event, the big event this weekend, this took place, Willie. This one has has audio, so... Holy bum. Yeah. So there we go. It is Joe uh, Joey Ryan's famous uh, uh, dick flip. You porn plex, whatever you want to call it, except this time on the other end is not another indie wrestler, is not a local hometown favorite. It is indeed the hardcore legend and WWE Hall of Famer Mick Foley trying to see whether or not the sock was greater than the cock, grabbing uh, the you porn uh, plex foolishly with Mr. Socko. He uh, indeed wound up taking the big bump, flipping over. Does the king of the death match, taking the dick flip, kill the business more than Leo Rush's power bomb off uh, the power bomb through the table? No sell. All right, you know what? No, Th- this this can I reverse the can I reverse the the numbers here? Rather than killing the business, I yes. want to talk about this one. 10 out of 10 saves the business of it, wrestling. It, 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 it rejuvenates it the reju- business. Yes, we have brought it back. Wrestling was dead as of <laughs> Friday. Wrestling was dead as of Monday, back alive. Uh, dude, first we got to see Mick Foley take another bump, which we never thought we'd see ever again. Yeah, right? that I think. And maybe we shouldn't see ever again low from this key, point on. That is something that I was the most shocked about uh, yeah. uh, with this is that. That, yeah, this is Mick Foley. Mick Foley did not take a bump in WWE when he was no. back as commissioner. 
And yet, I mean, it's kind it of is. just like a just a little somersaulty thing. Like it's not too crazy. He He's just not landing got a flat new hip, though. Like that's. I, I don't know if that's uh, uh, against doctor's orders. That, that guy has a hard time getting onto planes. Like, yeah, no, that's, he's that's definitely crazy. not in the shape to be doing any type of athletic activity. But, and also, I don't know if you saw, but you know, Dick Plex so hard his shoes came off. Uh, I mean, <laughs> did his shoe come everything off? about that bump was just brutal. I mean, like you know, wait a minute, I did not see his shoe come <laughs> yeah, off. Yeah, you didn't notice his shoe on at this moment. Shoe. No longer on. Wow. Holy <laughs> shit. You're right. Yeah. He loses his shoe. <laughs> and, I mean, that's just the power of Joey Ryan's dick. Uh, it's, it's you know, it's the eighth wonder of the world. Uh, it's, you know, it's impressive. So uh, I'll say this, though. Uh, J- Joey Ryan, I'm a huge fan of because yeah. of what he does. But uh, I got to stop following him on Twitter because... He's taking a real life heel turn in my heart, man. I can't, I, I can't, I can't follow him on Twitter anymore. So wait, wait, what? Because I need what, to what? still love him when I see him, but every time I read his tweets, I'm just like, "You're making me not love you, Joey Ryan." Uh, is is it the constant plugs or what? No, he's just kind of he's just kind of an asshole on Twitter. <laughs> well, give, I mean, what 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 turned you? What was what was the, the Joey Ryan heel turn? Let's go. It was the be- okay. You know what? The first thing was the dagger directly to my heart, which was no, I won't be on your podcast tweet. And then ah. that's when I started to notice more and more the the you know maybe he's just been doing this for a while, you know. That's, maybe that's what it is. That's the possibility. But, yeah, well, that's, but that's, he's just uh, he's just not the friendliest of guys on Twitter. I'll just say that. Uh, yeah, I would I would suspect that uh, that if if one were to not follow Joey Ryan, it would be because one cannot live in every local wrestling place at once. <laughs> uh, sure. And therefore, the fact that he is advertising his very busy schedule. Is uh is is oftentimes not exactly uh something that news you can use, for example. The the thing is though, I don't want to miss like all the sweet dick plexes that he's doing on people. That's that. So I'm torn right now. I'm torn. Yeah, there's got to just be. I wonder if 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 he could be like. Just... I want to keep him just like a kayfabe character. Is what I'm saying, right? Yeah. You know, that's like I I want to just like when I see him, I just want to believe that you know. Like, he's asking me if I like pina coladas, and he wants to just, like, you know, have a lollipop and, and dickplex somebody. I don't want to know that he doesn't want to be on my podcast. So this was a big issue this uh, uh this So who, who had a problem with this, by the way? Uh, like, who do you think? Who do you think had a problem with it? The man who has a problem with every comedy spot, uh, Jim Cornette. Mm. Double cheeseburger, double mayo, motherfucker. Uh, he... He doesn't like Kenny Omega because he wrestled the blow-up doll. He doesn't like Joey yeah, he Ryan because like he does the he does the dick plex. Here's the thing. How does Jim Cornette make his money right now? Jim Cornette makes his money getting booked at wrestling shows, for which keeping his name out there, specifically a controversial one, benefits. He gets paid by whatever he makes on his podcast. He gets paid on whatever he makes on his shoot interviews and stuff like that. All of which benefit from him having controversial, relevant opinions. Sure. This is his job. This is sure. what he does. Everybody who gets worked up by Jim Cornette is, is you know, it, it is what it is. It, it's fine. This is just his thing. You know, he's also the guy who at uh, WCPW, like, hit, uh, what did he hit somebody? He hit somebody with. Not a chair or whatever. Like, remember that? Like, he he participated in a comedy spot. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At WCBW. Yeah. I mean, he's... But he, he does, like, if you go to his website, I think, like, the shirt at the top is, uh, thank you, fuck you, bye, or something yeah. like that. Like, yeah. It's, it, this is his character, right? So this, this was Joey Ryan over the weekend. How long do I need to kill the business before it dies or even shows any damage? Because wrestling is on a fantastic upswing right now. And for Joey Ryan, I think it absolutely is. Uh, look, there's yeah. there are more places for indie wrestlers to work right now because indie wrestling is doing well. More people are going to it, largely, I think, because of social media and, and people just know more that there is indie wrestling available. You can see what the product is thanks to video sharing and Instagram and Twitter 
Uh, and there's a lot of big name people that work on these shows. And so therefore there's more interest to do it. Uh, I think also though, you gotta, you gotta give some credit. It's kind of funny to say this, but you have to give some credit to WWE because they are now starting to actually sign a big bunch of these indie guys. Right. Yeah. Oh, of course. So suddenly people are going, Oh wait, where did Kevin Owens come from? Oh, what's ROH. Oh, let me look at that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's kind of, it's kind of becoming more of a thing than it ever really was before. Where, yeah, there was, you know, uh, WCW and WWE, and there was like, oh, yeah, okay, there's that. And then there was Impact. Oh, okay, what is that? But there was not a lot of interest really outside of uh, just the, the super the super marks, right, to, to yeah. know all the little promotions. You know, I'll so tell you what. You we're know, in a new but, world but, right now. You know, this kind of stuff would never, never fly in WCW, right? Sure. Like, this kind of stuff where you would no sell a pile driver if you yep. were an established never star, happened. like mm. that would never ever happen. How about a finishing move that involves uh, some part of like your uh, some sort of genitalia, right? That would never be oh, a thing. Oh, sweet lord! You'd no. never shove your butt into someone's face and exactly. somehow have that or rub cause your... a pin, or, right? That's or... ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so for those of you who are only listening, we are watching now a gif of uh, Road Warrior Hawk absolutely no-selling a pile driver <laughs> by Yeah, and not men. only that, but from Haku, who is yeah. just like... <laughs> who is a legitimate murderer, so... No, it's somebody who would actually kill you, yeah. So, so yeah. Look, th it's it, the wrestling has actually not changed as much as a lot of people want to think it has. It's always been a thing that was fun. And there was a time where it was a lot of just fake punching, and we're getting to a point now where there's a lot more going on. Well, I mean, I think there is, and and I don't want to say that Jim Cornette didn't know what he talked about because he knows more about wrestling. Yeah, he was, he, he he, he's does. forgotten yeah. more about wrestling than both Willie and I will ever know. Okay, here's what I do think has changed in terms of the art itself, and that is, we are seeing a little bit of a difference between immersive theater versus Cirque du Soleil. You go to Cirque okay. du Soleil knowing that these are a bunch of performers that are going to do some death-defying and creative things. That is yep. where part of what we are going to now, the comedy, the uh, the, the acrobatics, uh, it, it is kind of a step removed. You can have a match that is amazing that works in some reference uh, that understands that we all know that Randy Orton was bitching about the concept of wrestling on Twitter. Like, sure. that, that is removed from the immersion you are taking yourself out of the immersion and i think that is what jim Cornette rails against whereas before you know while we can all understand that kayfabe has always kind of been a little overstated yeah there is still this idea that like no i want to believe when i'm sitting in that seat that these guys hate each other and they are trying to kill each other like that's what i want to believe when i sit down is that and you are taking me out of that every time you wink wink to uh the audience or you yeah. do things that are wholly unrealistic I, I i definitely i definitely can get on board with that uh as kind of just a feeling but i think you also like as a wrestling fan should be able to kind of separate the two in a meaningful way right because how are you going to enjoy a show where there's a man who apparently is a, a monkey from space? Yeah. And then also believe that the main event, uh, Cody Rhodes versus Scorpio Sky, is like an actual like knockout brawl. Yeah. Uh, and but like falling onto tax is like actually the worst thing that could happen. You know, all that kind of like you have you have to be able to kind of like go in and out of that, right? Well it has I, to be a fluid thing. Yeah, I, I don't I, I think that they are they might be opposite poles in this example, but the but sure. the, the reality lies somewhere in the middle. And ultimately yeah. I think the reason why the Cirque du Soleil model is a better product right now or a popular product is because it doesn't come with backstory. I want to see the acrobat. I know that the acrobat does the acrobatic thing. Does I don't need to know what he did yesterday. I don't need to know what he's going to do tomorrow. I don't need to know his backstory. All I need to know is that he comes out, he does the thing, he did it a little different, or, oh, he did it different because now he's working with this other guy that I'm more familiar with. 
that's fun, that's interesting, that's exciting. Whereas the immersive theater, you know, you have to, in the way that the art has been built, have a little bit of runway before and projection yeah. into what someone needs to next. have burned someone else's dead sister down in a house. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and what I think Wrestle Circus, and this is how we can get into this, the, the show sure. on Saturday, what they have is the ability with Twitch now to say, look, thousands of people watch us on a semi-weekly to monthly basis. We are drawing not only regulars that keep coming back to our show and selling out our house, but we are drawing thousands of people who make us appointment viewing whenever we run a show on Saturday. So we have more leeway to do immersive theater stuff. Uh, one of the big matches that you guys saw starring top tier indie talent was a, a match where, where uh, Jervis, uh, Gentleman Jervis captained one team and the villainous Austin the ref. Austin the ref, yeah. Uh, Who now uh, is fully captain, heel. Yeah, captain the other team. And yeah. that's something that doesn't fly in, uh, you know, that, that isn't necessarily a top-tier indie draw these days. You would rather just put All Ego, Ethan Page versus Space Monkey head-to-head -head because one's an up-and-coming indie star, one's a much more established indie star. Sure. You, that, that would draw people in. And yet, Wrestle Circus went this way. So let me ask you this. With the Wrestle Circus show, number one, how was that match? And number two, how did it play in with the rest of the the, the rest of the, the card there? So first, Justin, I have... I have a confession to make. Okay. I got another confession. The best, the best. Sorry. That now, <laughs> now Scorpio Sky's music is just like my favorite thing of all time. Uh, it's it's for anybody who doesn't know, it's the it, it's like the internet version of the best, but where it just says the best over and over and yeah. over again. So it's just the best, the, the best, best, the best. best, the best. There's like no more minutes. of you. There's it's so great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway. I did not go to the show. You didn't. You watched the show. I watched the show on Twitch. Nice. For the first time. Yeah. Uh, here's what happened. Trey okay. Warren, who uh, does our does our melodica covers. I so I golfed that day. Yeah. And I texted him in the morning and I said, Trey, I'm excited. Can you save me a seat? I have a golf tournament. I might get there a little late. We'll figure it out. Just. I'll see you when I when I get there. Yeah. Then he texted me at about like 3.30 or so and said, hey, man, I'm not going to make it. Do you want all three tickets? And uh, and so I talked to the, the guys I was golfing with. I said, does anybody want to do this? Yeah. It was 105 degrees outside, and we were golfing all day, and everyone was like, oh, go sit inside of a 750-person room and watch yeah. wrestling? No, I don't want to do that. About that, yeah. So I sorry. couldn't get anybody to go, and then I kind of chickened out, and I was like, you know, I'm actually pretty sunburnt. I'm going to do this thing where I'm going to go home and watch Wrestle Circus on Twitch for the first time. And I got to tell you, the Twitch experience is amazing. Like, yeah, I, you know, right? Being there is it was kind of sad to be to sit on my couch and watch it, knowing I could actually be in the room. But it was like the whole thing went off without a, a hitch watching it. Right. Like it was actually really fun and nice to be in an air conditioned room to watch <laughs> Resla Circus uh, on Twitch. And it was a fantastic show, man. It was so good. Uh, so, yeah, like I. I, I'm kind of glad and sad at the same time that I got to kind of experience it like everyone else is right now, right? Yeah. Like what the internet's kind of experiencing it as. Uh, and I and then at the end, it was sad because of the whole Austin Pets Alive thing, which is where I got my dog. Uh, I wish I could have been there because I would have definitely at least thrown up a bid for like a hundo. Yeah. Uh, on them boots, but anyway, the dude all the Ethan Page match, Space Monkey, Austin the ref. All of that is fantastic, and you're right. They actually have the ability now, because of you know semi regularly programmed stuff, they can actually do storylines as well as just these kind of random indie matches that are just fun because you like the guys that are in it. You don't need them to hate each other or like each other. Yeah. Uh, and then oftentimes, like they'll build a story just like that night, right? 
Sure. Like when we went, right? Yeah. We saw the story being built between Sammy Callahan. Uh, like th- that was all built in that one night, right? Yeah. Um, so it's possible to do both. It's possible to do all of it. Oh yeah, I mean, I think you it's can hard. you can you can tell the story within within the night. Uh, uh, and and I think that they they've done a really really great job. Uh, I unfortunately did not get to watch m- much of the show yet, just because uh, I've been working on. We we finished the Kickstarter for uh, for Action News, but we had to get now the actual work to finish everything up and get. And it I actually have to like games. make the games. I have to actually make the game, <laughs> which we did this weekend, which I'm very excited about, but. Give me, uh, give me your, 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 your top match. What, what, uh, what, what stuck so, out to you? All right. Watching? Well, there's a couple of weird. There's, a, there's one match that I do want to talk about because it was very strange, and I want, and I want you to go watch this. Maybe you should watch this. If, it, if, it, if it, it is the match, if week. it is the match you are talking about, I think I have already seen it. Is it Rachel Ellering and Chris, Christy Gaines? It indeed was. Okay. This one got awkward. This was weird, right? Because we saw. Uh, Tessa Blanchard, Rachel Ellering when you were there. Yeah. And it was the main event. And it was an awesome match, right? So obviously Rachel Ellering can can go in the ring. We know that. She's in the yeah. May Young Classic. She's fantastic. Christy Janes has been as far as like all the all the matches I've seen of her most of the time have been you know the comedy matches, right? Yeah. Uh, she's kind of part of that like mid card wrestle circus thing, but here, but she's also very good. Like I actually quite enjoy her too. Um, this time this was like, okay, number one contenders match. So Ellering's chance to get back to have like a rematch for the title and Christy Jane's to kind of enter the upper echelon of women wrestlers at wrestle circus. Right. Yeah. Um, what happened was they both no sold each other for about five minutes, then had a kind of a weird stare down. <laughs> then just the roll up finish. That was super weird. It clearly was, neither of them were happy with each other. It was certainly odd. I am trying to find if somebody else can find uh, it's uh, like a clip if somebody of else it? can can find that clip uh, because yeah. I've seen it. Kind of it, cer- it was like it was it was so. Wrestle Circus had on R squared Circle uh, like a thread, like a lot kind of a live thread, yeah. similar to what they do <clears throat> for every other show. But no other match actually got its own thread except for this one, because yeah. people were basically like, "What was that? Like, what did I just watch?" And I don't think I've ever seen a match. It was like watching like a comedian bomb, or it was like watching like a band where like a guy. Like breaks like like a band breakup live on stage or something. It was like one of those things where it, you're like, it, well, it's really even more awkward than that, right? Yeah, because if 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 a, if a comedian bombs, you know that that's a thing that comedians do, right? Yeah. Like sometimes the jokes aren't funny. If a band breaks up on stage, somebody unplugs their guitar and walks off. Uh, yeah. They don't have to pretend to <laughs> yeah. end they the don't show have well. To pretend to like play the rest of the songs or whatever. Yeah, like. They still had to figure out a way to finish the match, and that was just yeah. so we we don't have to show it. Uh, uh, instead, we will show uh, this. Uh, this was during the auction that uh, that uh, uh, Dills was talking about for Austin Pets Alive. This is Cody Rhodes holding a little puppy. Which, by the way, Trey Warren in the chat is telling us this puppy has been adopted. Yeah, uh, Austin Pets Alive is where I got my my dog. So I tweeted about this. Like it really did bring a tear to my eye to watch that whole scene uh play out because so basically what happens is cody rhodes has and scorpio sky have a pretty sweet match the attack spot you know like the cody rhodes takes a bump onto some tacks yeah uh it was it was fantastic cody rhodes ends up getting the win afterwards he auctions off the boots that he was wearing when he won the ring of honor title yeah so not it's like the boots he was wearing them that night or whatever. Like these are actual these like, are these are historic the world championship boots. boots right yeah, here. auctions them off just live to the crowd. All the money goes directly to Austin Pets Alive. Like it was a thousand bucks that went, and the guy who bought them was the was a guy sitting in front of me like two wrestle circuses ago, who was like the whole time I was like this filthy Mark right here. Oh god damn <laughs> this guy like, and now I see him you know 
break in the bank to buy some boots to support some animals. I'm like, all right, never mind. I'll Good love on you, you. everybody. Next time I see that guy, I'm going to buy him a beer and give him a hug. But it was beautiful. It was literally like two things that are pretty large in my world right now colliding in like the best way possible. So, yeah, Wrestle Circus, man, they're getting huge plugs on this podcast and they will forever and ever because everything they're doing is gold right now. Yeah, I'll tell you, now they, maybe Joey Ryan will never be on our podcast, but but uh, uh, I think that we need to put in some inquiries to, to the Wrestle Circus people because I got, I got some yes. questions that I'd love to ask them uh, about what they're doing. All right. Well, uh, they're actually moving to a new venue, too. That's That was the last show at 700 Congress. Which they is are, a shame, uh, man, uh, because I, I know that, listen, for, for the health of their business, that they probably want to move into a new venue so it, they can, you know, do bigger and better things. And, and Yeah, the new place apparently is going to hold 2,000 people yeah. rather than 700. But, 800 Congress, excuse me. But I will say, man... That is a unique indie wrestling experience to be able to hang out at some of those bars in and around Sixth Street, and then just you're, mosey yeah, you're on literally over, like downtown Austin. Just mosey on over to world class indie wrestling. That primo, 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 uh, and Epico. Okay, let's uh, <laughs> let's move on. We oftentimes cast our gaze beyond the squared circle. Uh, pro wrestling is, of course, a philosophy and a way of life, which is why we like to apply it to other elements of our pop culture society. Last night, the Internet was torn asunder as one of the favorite couples of the modern era, celebrity couples, Chris Pratt and Anna Ferris announced jointly that they are legally separating. But however, if this were not two decent people who are trying to communicate their dissolved marriage to uh, a joint adoring fan base, but rather the world of professional wrestling. How would you book the Anna Ferris Chris Pratt breakup? Okay. Well, obviously uh, they're both faces. Okay. And, and I think that's a huge part I, of it. Yeah. And I think they remain faces. So you're going to have to book them. Against the heel couple. So, first instinct clearly says uh, that they go against the Miz and Maurice. And Miz cuts a sweet promo on how he's a bigger movie star than Chris Pratt. Okay. Uh, the Marine 5, clearly better than Guardians, uh, than Guardians of the Galaxy, of the Galaxy yeah. 2. He can even bring up the fact that your career is going to be over after Guardians of the Galaxy 3 because they just announced that they're going to move on to new characters after that. Uh, there's a lot of room for some great promo work there. Uh, and I think uh, in the end, Miz and Maurice go over in a, in a divorce match. Uh, the, the losing couple has to get oh, divorced. Oh, so you're saying the losing couple has to get has to yes. get divorced. That's, yes. that's the big, uh, the, the, the big uh, uh, thing. And that's, why, that's how you keep them both... You protect them both, yep. Ferris and Pratt. Yep. And See, neither are... of them wanted to, but they had to based on a stipulation, right? <laughs> it's not a wrestling stipulation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They still love each other, but they have to, unfortunately, get divorced. Oh, man. That's you want to know what I was going to I was going to suggest something, but I love that so much. I love <laughs> I love that also that 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 uh, I could imagine Batista suggesting that when he's like, uh, sure. when, when Pratt's like, yeah, you know, me and Anna were really having problems. Like, I just moved out to the guest house. Uh, you know, <laughs> things are things are really bad. It's like, well, uh, have you considered a loser gets divorce match? <laughs> yeah, nobody it could would save be your fault. marriage. It's kind of like when you like decide to do an open relationship to try to save the marriage. <laughs> have you have you considered? Have you considered shopping to the Miz and Maurice? Man. Nobody would blame you. Miz would be out there uh, saying, oh, I made him get divorced. Ha, ha, ha. I'm the best. Yep. Oh, my God. That'd be amazing. It'd be amazing. That would be uh, the, 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 other, the other thing would be fun, though, is you could, you could send them to the indies, uh, and I wouldn't mind seeing. Like, we all know that, uh, you know, Adam Cole is, like, on his way yeah. to bigger and better things. But on the way... Adam Cole, Britt Baker uh, versus uh, Chris Pratt and Anna Faris. Just, you know, just one more, one more, uh, you know, time through 
Like just have a, have a good time on the Indies. Yeah, young, one more so match. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You you book it. Young love versus a, a dissolving marriage with a kid. You know. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Like we were you when you met. Yeah. We're still that, and we'll never break up. Oh. We're we're like our bond is forever. Yeah. Baby. <laughs> Getting divorced, baby. <laughs> uh, by the way, so here is the new location for Wrestle Circus. It's uh, it, it's it is way north, there. way yeah. north. But whatever, I'll still make the trek. It's fine. Yeah, two thousand people. It's it's much bigger, and it looks cool. It looks like it's kind of be rather than being able to go, you know, to a bar right around the corner, you'll have to probably uh, do a little trekking. But yeah, a little little. Uh, well, maybe it's some tailgating, huh? Here, here's my suggestion. It to is by a Home Depot. OK. All right. Uh, here's my suggestion to Wrestle Circus is this. Yeah. Start making the shows BYOB. Well, I mean, I, I would imagine that they'd be moving into a venue like that so they could have a a, a a bigger liquor license. If they have a full bar and everything, fair enough. But yeah. I went to play some mini golf last night at a place that was BYOB, and it was fantastic. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Dude, BYOB. Like, <laughs> BYOB one of those things as, as, as you get older. Mm. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Love it. It's like, I know, I know that I'm going to get some good beer. I'm oh, yeah. not going to be, you know, eat, like Shiner's the best that you have to offer me. There's like, you know, I got I had a nice like blueberry IPA last night. It was fantastic. Ooh. Ooh. Tell you yeah. What. Living the dream, Willie. How about this? We go ahead and, uh, and end on something that we uh, like to do. Not the Melodica Challenge yet. We have the return of the slow-mo promo. All right. So uh, uh, what uh, set up this first clip here, Willie? Hold on, I gotta pull up my my slow mo folder so I know who all these people are. All right, so here's the thing. All I, I'm gonna give you, so you, it's you versus the chat essentially. Okay. The, the chat has a delay. Yeah. Right. So you're gonna have. So I got seven seconds. To try to to try to get at them, and if you if you if you haven't listened to the show when we've done slow mo promo, the idea here is, I've taken a very short amount of a promo, so you're not gonna get. A full sentence. You're gonna get a few words here. Yeah. It's slowed down about sixty-ish percent. Okay. These are all WWE personalities. I'm not gonna say that all of them are actual wrestlers. Okay. You just gotta give me the wrestler. I gotta give you the. Per I gotta give you the man or, or, the, or the woman the, or the personality. The talent. Yeah. All right. So here we go. This is the first slow mo promo. Only two seconds for the record. Ladies and gentlemen. Mm, I'm going to play that again. Ladies and gentlemen. Now, I feel I felt like I could only give you two seconds of this one because that is part of this person's promo every single time they do the promo. Uh, oh, God oh, damn it. Chat just beat you. Yep. Paul that Heyman. Is Paul Heyman, ladies and gentlemen. All right, Paul yes. Heyman, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen. My right. name is Paul Heyman. Okay, so go. I'm 0 yep. for 1. I'm 0 for 1 against the chat. Over Chat's 1. quick, dude. Chat's quick. Here we go. All right, number two. Look how the tables have turned. Look so you got a little extra here. Look how the tables have turned. Yes. Is it the who's, rock? Who's turned tables recently? Is it? Uh, is it, is it, is it uh, Chris Jericho? Ooh, that wouldn't have been bad, but no, unfortunately it is oh. not Chris Jericho. God damn it, playing it I'm again. I'm actually curious Look to see if the jacket the tables this. have turned. Now is that I'm hearing this one back, this one's hard. <laughs> this, this is, is it, really... is it, is it CM Punk? This one's very hard, actually. No, every, every single person on here currently working for wwe currently so. working oh god yeah. all right chat still hasn't gotten it yet so no chat has just no idea all right give me, one, give me one more go all right one more look how the tables have turned oh man that is hard oh geez i i think i, I should have given like uh 
Maybe another bit of a sentence there. All right, I'll tell you. That is actually AJ Styles. Oh. Uh, and that was that was one of the promos versus John Cena. That was kind of part of their whole back and forth. But it was basically because he was he was now the champ. Yeah. And John Cena was coming after his title. So he was telling John Cena, look how the tables have look turned. Look how All the right. tables have turned. All right, here we go. This is number three. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, is that Kurt Angle? Do you know what do you know what's being said in that? Pittsburgh, way, Pennsylvania. P- yeah, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Is it is it is it Elias? Is is it is it Elias <laughs> Sampson? No, that would have been good too, though. But yeah, basically, I was uh, you you could I I like that you could tell it's a heel though because how often do like the faces call out call out the name of the city name, unless the they're from they're the in, city? Right? Is it is you, it? You, Corey Graves? No, no, it's it's the Miz. It's the Miz. The Miz. Uh, yeah. So I, I was like, I want to see if he can figure it out just by the fact. Well, first of all, if he's like like Pittsburgh, I know you're a fan. So yeah. Uh, I was uh I was like, oh, this is perfect. But yeah, it's the Miz, uh, crapping all over Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. All right, all right. So the chat is still up on me. Uh, one to nothing here. They still haven't gotten these other two by the way. These other two were very clearly like a little too hard. All right, so here we go. Here's number four. Without a shadow of a doubt. Without a shadow of a doubt. All right, one more. I'm actually. Without a shadow of a doubt. <laughs> I actually think I made these too hard. Now that I'm looking <laughs> back to them. Uh. I needed to give you some more catchphrases. I think. All right, I'll t- I'll, I'll give you a hint. No, wait, no, 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 no. Okay. It's not Baron Corbin. Chad has guessed no. Baron Corbin. No. Uh, I am going to say that this is Randy Orton. Oh, wow. That's not a bad guess, actually, now that I listen back. No, not Randy Orton. All right, well, I'm, I'm going I'm to play it again. I'm going to play it again. My hint was it's a face. Without a shadow of a doubt. Is it John Cena? Mm, I'm afraid not. It's it's a face in the front and maybe a heel in the back. <laughs> Rikishi? <laughs> no, Enzo Amore. Enzo Amore. Oh face my in the god. Front, heel in the back. Yep. <laughs> Without a shadow of a doubt. See, I was go- like, I, it was too easy. Like I was gonna give you like one of his like super. Uh, Enzo y type of like, you know, he, he was like saying some stuff that I was like, that's too Enzo, that's too Enzo, that's too obvious. And then I was like, without a shadow of a doubt, yeah, this is actually that's super the way perfect. to go. All right, well, listen, I only have one more chance to tie. I, I the want chat. you to get one. I got one I more chance to tie the chat. Here we go. Is it good or bad? Is a simple question. Is it good or bad that I is did. a simple question. I didn't even slow this down. You didn't even slow this down. No, no, no. no. Is it good or bad is a simple question. Is that Roman Reigns? I forgot that I did this. <laughs> I, did, I, did, I did these a few days ago. Oh, it's Rusev. I didn't, I didn't even slow that one down. Is it Rusev? Yeah, it's Rusev. All right, here we go. I literally was like, I'm going to give him all these four and then – because Rusev's voice is already sounds like it's slowed down. Anyway. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. Uh, uh, Rusev asking you about uh, this bit. Is it good or bad is a simple question. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually, that wouldn't be bad as just our audio of the day. Right? It's just our audio, yeah. Our sound Still, of the is week it is. Bad, it's a simple is question. it good or bad is a simple question. <laughs> Uh, uh, by the way, I, I, I'm pumped for Rusev, Randy Orton. I think that's going to be a great oh my God, going yeah. into SummerSlam. You know, it's so funny because every time I watch what culture stuff on wrestling, yeah. they all love Rusev so much. Yeah. And it's so great. Like, because I, I agree with everything they say. Like, this guy needs to be pushed to the friggin' moon, dude. Yeah. He is. Rusev is fantastic. So good. So good. So good. So is it good or bad is a simple question. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, that brings us to our favorite segment of the week. That is our melodica promo. Uh, last week, 
I believe it was this one. I did not get this. Uh, Willie, did you get this? Not even close. Not, not even, even a little bit. Not even close. Uh, no. That apparently is uh, <laughs> Hakeem the African Dream. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is Hakeem the African Dream. So, old school fans, I hope you got it. Did, now, a uh, question. Did you prefer him as the African Dream or as the one-man gang? I preferred him as the one-man gang as he mm. was uh, distinctively less uh, of a perilous racial caricature yeah. and uh, uh, uncalled for slander against Dusty Rhodes. He, he could actually hail from Louisiana or whatever, like yeah. instead of, yeah, yeah. Which he clearly was yeah. not from Africa. All right, here we go. This is our uh, Melodica Challenge for this week. One more time. I feel like time. he stopped there because if he gave us any more, it was going to be too easy. One more time. Now, I'm looking at the answer, so I know what it is, and I don't know if I could ever get it. If you could, go ahead and hit us up Dude. at Justin uh. R. Young on Twitter and at Willie Dills on Twitter. Uh, it is not the devil went down to Georgia. <laughs> uh, I just forgot to play it again. So let's try one more it. time. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Uh, that about wraps it up. Again, you can get your downloadable copy of that track if you get on over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash 1900wrestling. In the meanwhile, you can go ahead and follow me, twitch.tv slash Justin R. Young, which is where we do the show live every Monday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific time. That is 1, a 1 p.m. Eastern time. But where can we find you, Willie Dills? So uh, check me out on Twitter at Willie Dills, as you said. Uh, but mostly check out twitch.tv slash Willie Dills. Be doing a bunch of uh, Hearthstone coming up. And uh, Justin, it's official. What's that? Thursday the 10th, the new expansion is dropping. So uh, if on. you'd like to join me. Oh, we're doing to... it. We're going yeah, to get, get frozen on that frozen throne. We're gonna open some packs. We're gonna we're let's, gonna let's we're gonna mess around with them new cards. See what we can come up with. We're and, gonna come up uh, with some, hit the ladder. You know, some do crazy some experimenting. Stuff. Crazy Should be a good stuff. time. Hell yeah! All I'm right, actually, I'm, I'm planning on uh, I'm gonna have I'm basically gonna stock my my apartment so I don't have to leave for about 24 hours. 24 so, hours. You're gonna yeah. be frozen to your seat. Yes. I'm That's gonna get. I'm gonna get the. Uh, I'm gonna get the the Doritos and the and the Mountain Dew. I'm gonna <laughs> get all in on the gaming stuff. But I'm also gonna get like some absinthe, and uh, like some. So I'm gonna make some good cocktails. Uh oh. And plenty of beers around as well. Uh oh. We're gonna get weird. I'm, on I'm, the nights of the frozen throne. Listen, I'm totally okay with this. I'm totally okay with this. But uh, as your as your online brother. Uh, you're going to give me your Twitter password and I'm going to change it for 24 hours. <laughs> That's it. That's the only condition that as as your friend, I'm going to I'm going to change your Twitter password for 24 hours. We'll see about that. We'll, see. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk. All right, brother. I will talk to you uh, and everybody else later. That about wraps it up for one nine hundred wrestling. My name is Justin Robert Young. That is Willie Dills Gregory, and we will see you guys next week. Years, and nobody, but nobody knows hey! wrestling like me. Remember the number one nine hundred wrestling. Stupid idiots. They call me a rock. Hurt your smell. What the rock is cooking? And his name is John Cena. Well, look at this, prima donna. Thank God Donald Trump's all here yet. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> <laughs>